Okay, hello, I'm Dan Judson. Welcome to the Charged Up Coaches Clinic. Um, while we're waiting for a few other people to join us, I'm going to take you to the uh, Macomb Elementary website. Uh, for you of those that are interested in visiting it, there's lots of good information there. It's macombso.org. That's macombso.org. And um, a wonderful site for anything, any of the events that, uh, that you're participating in. So I'm going to start sharing some content here. And we'll for those here. participants who have joined with their video, we are recording set today's session. And so you may want to uh, turn off the video so that you don't get captured in our official recording. All right, uh, this is the main website. Um, if you want to click on elementary rules. Um, oops, I'm sorry. Click on the rules. And you come here, click in charged up. And you'll see all the basic rules, outlines of, of the type of stuff that we are going to cover. The material I'll be presenting today is uh, will cover all of these topics. Uh, another quick click on here is this right here. If you click here, you'll be ended up here. There's my picture there. The rules again, they have an insert from the uh, quick start kit. Um, some previous handouts from last year's coaches workshop, some example questions and so forth. And a uh, key thing here is uh, zip grade. We'll be using the zip grade for the multiple portion, multiple choice portion of the test. And uh, it's uh, very good for the kids to get used to filling that out. And they provided a copy of that if you want to print them out and make some copies for your students. Um, this is everything that's in the kit. Uh, we make it available to everybody so that it can save some of the uh, coaches time trying to assemble stuff. If you don't have a kit, um, the cost is $30. Um, it includes battery holders. So you can hook up in series and parallel. A nice little handout that I'll go over here in a second. Um, some bulb holders, uh, some bulbs. You might want to order some extras of these because you'll find out that the kids, if they hook up too many batteries in series, will burn these out. So I always have extras on hand. Jumper wires to hook up your circuit, switches, LEDs, diodes, resistors, and also a motor that uh, functions. So <laughs> going to this, um, uh, handout here. I just wanted to go over some things here because this covers, while well, I'm going to be covering some of the questions that are in the exam, some of you may want to look through this um, at your leisure and it explains some of the fundamentals of uh, circuits and uh, so forth. So these are the components that you will need. This is a description of a battery. Two batteries in series would look like this. Two batteries in parallel would look like this. Explains things about their voltages and so forth. Some additional information. Explains a little bit about a nine volt battery. Um, explains schematic symbols. We use a lot of schematic symbols. So it's good to familiarize your students with these. Again, series, parallel, on the incandescent bulbs. There is no polarity. We're on batteries. We always insist that there's polarity there. We also have some switches that are involved. A single pole single throw switch looks like this. A single pole double throw, so it can be thrown this way and or this way. That's why we call it double throw. Switch looks like this, okay? These are examples of a single pole switch, some examples of a, a single pole double throw switch. And here's an explanation of diodes. One of the reasons we have polarity on batteries is because diodes require polarity. The diodes allow current to only flow in one direction. So if we don't have the symbols on there, we don't know what direction the current is flowing. So you will see an example of a real life diode, a schematic symbol of a diode. If it's hooked up like this, 
where the positive is hooked up to the positive and the negative is hooked up to the negative, the bulb will light. If it's hooked up this way, where the positive is hooked up to the negative, the opposite way, the bulb will not light. A fancy type of diode is an LED. It's shown as the same as an LED, except has two arrows that show that light is emitted from it. The nice thing about the diodes is you, the LEDs is you always know that it's hooked up properly because it will light up if it's hooked up properly. So um, another example that they give here is an excellent example is one diode is hooked up this way, one diode is hooked up that way, and you can see by switching the batteries which ones will light up. And then we also have a section on resistors included in your kit is some resistors and we'll be covering this information later, but it's a chart that is provided during the test where the kids are asked to read the resistance of a there uh, of a resistor. And then some example of building some circuits. Examples of using a motor, so it's got a lot of very, very nice useful information in it and. Um, I, I hope you guys take the advantage of that and use that uh, with your students. Um, I'm going to try to share something else here now and start the um, um, clinic. So I'm not seeing the main screen, John, so let me see if I can here. There we go. Oh, I still have the chat open, John, so that if anybody wants to type in a question, it looks like I can read your questions and so forth. So I'm going to stop sharing this and I'm going to start sharing. Oh, uh, let's see here. Let me scroll down. All right, our PowerPoint presentation. Can everybody see that on the screen? John, can you see that? I don't see it yet. Uh, I just see that it's focused on you. Um, so uh, why right. don't you let stop me, sharing it uh, briefly? Let, let me make sure you're, I'm sharing it properly. So yeah, it says I'm sharing. Yeah, you may. I think you have to stop sharing what you were sharing before. So let's tell yes. it to stop sharing and then reshare and see yep. if that reset it. We'll try it again. That's what I did, but. Sometimes the internet takes a while to. Uh, I've seen uh, this behavior within Teams before, so it's. Uh, share content. Oops. Is this the deck that you sent me earlier? Yeah, this is the PowerPoint that I sent you earlier. Yeah. And. Share content. Uh, there it is. So can you see it now? I'm hoping. Am I? Yeah, sorry, I'm off looking at something else for a brief moment. No, I still don't see it, but I can. Um, I can share it from my computer if uh, if if you could, then uh, we'll try. Helpful. We'll try that. I'll try one more time here and. That I had it open, I don't. Let me try one more time. Just shared it before the sh we started, and everything worked fine. So yeah, of course, that's going to be the way it is, isn't it? Uh, All right. So, so can you see it now, Dan, on your screen? No, I do not see it on my screen. I I think we can see it. Uh... The oh, can you see the presentation? 
yeah, yeah charged up 2021 Dan, yeah. Dan so Jordan. Dan if you can if you, if you can tab through your own copy of it and tell me when to move forward we can we can move on I'm I'm yeah I'm but it's page. weird I'm not seeing it on my screen but I'm like I'm going blind here so uh, <laughs> um, this is why we hit our belts and suspenders moment here so uh, that's it so I see so I won't be able to see the questions. So if you can see those now, I think we'll we'll be able to work it out. All right, everybody can see it. So I am going to have to do this uh, blind. So uh, click on the, on page two. I'm John, charged up will. format. Yeah, charged up format. Okay. Uh, this is a, for everybody that's out there. This is a station event. Uh, we typically have seven stations. Um, and what this means is the students have to perform a task at that station in approximately two and a half to three minutes, probably closer to two and a half minutes and three, but but there are some times where we do, are able to squeeze uh, an extra half a minute in there. Um, uh, from that, they rotate to the next station when that time is up. They're not allowed to move uh, to the next station before the time is up because that would give an unfair advantage uh, to any of the uh, the students that cannot rotate. So we try to keep things fair, try to make sure everybody has the same amount of time at each station. Um, typically, I spend five to 10 minutes uh, explaining the uh, rules in the test format to the students, ask if they have any questions, which leaves about uh, 25, 20 to 25 minutes left to do the exam. And that's why we try to shoot at two and a half minutes. And I like to have the students finish ahead of time so they can get on to their next event because there's always that rush to get from event to event for those that are booked uh, uh, backed up to another event. Uh, the format of the, the, uh, the stations is five stations are multiple choice. You use the zip grade that I alluded to in the uh, uh, at the website. Uh, one point questions have two options. These are typically true false questions. Um, two point questions will be uh, multiple choice anywhere from three to five uh, options on that. And I do have some tiebreakers and those tiebreakers are worth zero points and usually there's some type of essay. And uh, I encourage the students to do those last because there were zero points. The best way to break a tie is to answer one or two more questions in um, whoever you're tied with. But in some cases we do end up with the tie and I do have that and that's an option if the students do finish that section ahead of time, they do have some time to uh, to do the tiebreaker. I also have a draw the circuit section and I also have a construct the circuit section. Um, I try to have as many hands on as possible for both the multiple choice, the draw and the construct. Um, for the tiebreakers, Dan, you have multiple questions in that section. Uh, what I do is at the bottom of the section, I'll, I'll choose one of the easier or sometimes two of the easier sections and I'll put tiebreakers and I'll have tiebreaker one and tiebreaker two. And uh, if the students uh, finish ahead of time, they have some time to, to fill that out, keep them busy. And also if the if the need be that there is a tie, um, we have a method of breaking it without um, uh, getting too elaborate into, into so too if, elaborate. If there, are, if there are multiple questions, are they worth the same amount when you're when you're scoring them at, for the tiebreaking? Uh, I have a tiebreaker one and tiebreaker two. So if they were to tie on tiebreaker one, then we would go to tiebreaker two. But I, I don't think that's ever happened. If it has, it's been where three or four teams have tied, maybe one first tiebreaker breaks it down to two and then and so forth. So um, just just to clear that up, there will be, you know, um, uh, the one is usually enough to to break that. And that's the one that's at the first one that the students uh, get to usually um, um, station one, station two or station three, which are typically the easier stations for the kids to uh, complete. Um, for the construction portion at the county event, I typically have two options. I have an easy option 
where they may construct uh, some simple circuits like a series or a parallel circuit or both in the two and a half minutes. And that's usually worth 20 points. And then I have a hard one that is worth 40 points. Um, many of the people, uh, many of the students uh, know enough to to be able to complete the hard one. But the question is that sometimes they don't have enough time. Uh, two and a half minutes is not a lot of time for some of those. So if your students are a little bit slow in the construction portion, you may want to encourage them to do the easy one and get the guaranteed 20 points. Um, usually it's 20 or 40, there's no partial credit. So, um, you know, you, you're going for all or nothing if you go for the 40. So, and and usually there's not a lot. Maybe six or seven uh, teams will get that uh, that hard one. It is usually fairly difficult. Not above the kids' level, but usually there's uh, several components in it that make it a little bit more difficult and uh, make it uh, where they have to work a little bit faster. Um, okay, if you can go to the next page, John, page three. Charged up schematics. Charged up schematics. These are um, the um, major components that we use in our uh, our drawings. The kids will be uh, have to draw the, um, their circuits using these. Uh, they will be in some of the multiple choice questions, and the example of their circuit will in the construct will be drawn this way, as you'll see towards the end, where I have example questions. Batteries must show polarity. Uh, probably 30 to 40 percent of the students don't show polarity and so they don't get credit for that. So it's important to make sure the kids get in the habit of showing the polarity. I really don't care which side the plus or minus is on. I've been told by some friends at Selfridge that this is completely wrong and that's because the military puts the negative on the large one, but in industry they have a tendency to put the uh, positive one on the larger of the two plates doesn't make any difference to me. I just want to make sure that it's there. Um, so however you teach your students is fine with me, um, but I just wanted to make sure that it needs to be there uh, um, and it's very important. Diodes also must show polarity and the reason for that is if you look at the circuit on the right, uh, only one of these will light because this one, uh, the one at the bottom of the diodes uh, will light because of um, uh, correct polarity. The other one will not light unless the polarity of the batteries are switched. You could build this circuit and see, swip your, flip your batteries around, and then you'll see that they'll light up. Uh, the same thing goes with LEDs. LEDs is nothing more than a diode with two or three arrows going off at about a 45 degree angle to show that light is given off. Switches, this is an example of a normally open switch, normally closed switch. I do not require the arrows on there, but if you can see from the top switch, sometimes it's kind of hard to tell if that's completely closed or completely open. And uh, when the kids are in a hurry, sometimes their artwork isn't the nicest. So if they can take the time to at least put the arrow in there, then I'll know for certain if that switch is opened or closed as it's uh, requested in the, uh, in the question. Um, also, I've included some examples of single pole, single throws, single pole, dual throws. Those are the only schematics that the kids need to know. Um, I do have three types of switches. I have the single pole, single throw. So the top one on the right goes with the top one on the description. The switch on the bottom on the right goes with the one, uh, the single pole double throw. And I also have one that I throw out there uh, for the kids to use if they want, but I don't use a schematic because it's too complicated. And that's a dual throw, um, dual pole, dual pole, dual throw switch. And uh, it's kind of neat looking, but uh, other than that, it's there's not a lot of use to it, but uh, I put it out there so the kids can see what that uh, looks like in real life. Uh, typically our light bulbs, I call them bulbs, um, will look like this. That's an incandescent bulb, um, different than the LED, all right? Um, number four. Um, practice no, test we'll circuit. Practice test. Let me see if there's any questions. I don't see any questions yet. OK, good. Um, so we'll start going through some example questions. This is typically what the children will see in station one. Um, 
sometimes I have some safety questions in there also, such as, uh, you know, flying a kite near uh, uh, wires or uh, um, uh, handling, safe handling of electricity and, and that type of thing. Uh, but generally, uh, the majority of the questions on that will be nothing more than uh, boxes with uh, circuits drawn in them and asked if they will light. If they light, all the bulbs need to light. The answer will be true. If one or more of the bulbs do not light, the answer is false or B. And so for those of you that are unfamiliar, I will explain what's going on here. 1A is a series circuit. Um, the electricity um, flows out of the nubbed end of the battery into the first light bulb, out the side, into the second light bulb, out the side, and then returns to the negative end of the battery. So this is a complete circuit. The items that you see in this drawing are pictorial. They actually look like a light bulb and they actually look like a battery. I do this so that some of the kids that aren't as familiar with schematics can answer some of the questions properly to make sure that we get the maximum amount of participation and uh, uh, encourage the kids to get uh, a higher score. Um, Typically, when the kids draw the circuits, the pictorials are not acceptable. We need to use the schematics that you saw on the previous page or that are shown in question two. Um, question two will also light. The correct answer is A. This is a parallel circuit. Um, obviously, the batteries and the light bulbs don't look like real batteries and light bulbs, but the item on the right is shown how things are hooked up in parallel. If you think side by side, that's parallel. If you think sequential, that's series. If you look on uh, question one. Um, question three, we have an open circuit. The switch is open, so the bulbs will not light, and the bulb is not connected properly. To be properly connected, the bulb must make contact with that bottom nub on the bulb and on the side. So that one is false for that reason. Question four, is an example of a short circuit. Uh, batteries are opposed. Um, ooh, I did put the wrong question in there. I'll have to clear that up. Uh, what is supposed to show is the batteries are opposed. The batteries, the negative ends of the batteries are touching each other. Um, it looks like on this one that I copied in there is the wrong one. Uh, it also will not light because of the switch being closed. Um, uh, electricity takes the path of least resistance. So if it doesn't have to go through the bulb, it can take the short circuit, which is that line in the middle with the switch. Um, it will. Now, if you were to open that switch, there would no longer be a short circuit and the energy, the electricity would be forced to go through the bulb. Uh, I hope that's clear. Any questions on that? Now look. And uh, yes, you only see one battery there. Uh, my apologies. I'll correct that on the website. If you want to download this uh, tomorrow, it, John should have it up there and uh, correct it. Um, John, can you click on page five? Practice test circuits, circuits. starting with okay. question five. Exactly, starting with question five. Um, this, um, I have a few easy ones of these, and I have a few much more complicated versions of these. So it's good to work on these if you have time and have the students get familiar with it. But basically, if I close the switch, X, Y, or possibly Z, which lights will come on? And in this case, is it light A, B, light B, lights A and B, or none of the lights? So if I close switch X, I put the top left hand of that circuit, uh, the energy will go through A, light bulb A, the electricity, and you will have a complete circuit and it will light. Uh, electricity cannot go through light bulb B because the switch Y is open and um, the current cannot flow through an open switch. Um, question six, switch S1 controls which lights? Uh, light one, light two, light three, or all of the lights? In, in, or none of the lights. In this case, it's a series circuit, and if the switch is put in series, it controls all of the items in that uh, circuit. So it's an easy thing to remember for a series circuit. Um, 
it controls all the lights, so the correct answer would be D for this. This is an example of what kind of circuit? Uh, we talked earlier, this is an example of a series circuit. If you want an example of a parallel circuit, a good example of a parallel circuit would be the picture at the top of this page is a parallel circuit. Uh, okay, ja, uh, let me see if there's any questions. Uh, no, so we'll go on to page six, John. Practice test, true, false, and multiple choice. That is correct. So, um, some of these uh, will be put in different sections. Typically, I add these to section one, two, or three um, and uh, have some uh, safety issues in here, also some definitions and some electrical principles are usually the three components that I have. Uh, example of a safety one would be it's never safe to touch a downed power line. That is true. Um, example of a definition, amps is the unit used to measure the amount of electrical current. At the end of this presentation, I have a list of definitions. If you look at that, that is the definition of an amp or ampere. That is true. And uh, electrical principles, a short wire has higher resistance than a long wire. Um, that is false. That is something that you can work on with your students in the multimeter section, which we'll be covering here shortly. Um, any questions on this? Questions there? Nope. All right, we'll go on to the uh, multimeters. Um, oh, I got two sections on multimeters for you guys, so they're good for you. Uh, the measured voltage in a standard household electrical socket an electrician is working on would use what setting? And he would use the VAC setting. Uh, to make this a little bit clearer, I have some other questions two pages down, and we'll cover those in a minute. You can, I'll explain exactly each of those sections. Also, uh, in the meter section, I have, uh, or build the circuit section, I have a um, series of questions on conductors and insulators. And uh, question 12, it is an example of that. In this case, I'm asking them to measure the resistance of the aluminum rod. Could be the resistance of a penny, a nickel. It could be a, a light bulb. Um, it could be anything like that. A battery, a voltage of a battery. But they so you at, can see. at the station, you would give the students the volt a voltmeter to work with, and they would have an object then to test. In this yes. case, it was aluminum rod. Yes, in this case, it would be an aluminum rod. Yes, they will have a meter. I supply the meter. I'll show a picture of that. And also there's another uh, web um, handout on the website uh, that uh, gives the model number of the meter and uh, it's a little bit older. They have a more current one. I got it from Sears because it was readily available, but now Sears <laughs> doesn't seem to have that. Last year they did and uh, even uh, eBay and uh, Amazon have uh, have limited supply or or for what I paid for a meter, $15, $20 for a meter, they are now asking for $100, which is outrageous, and I don't expect you to get that. But I'll, I'll uh, recommend that you get one, get one at Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, I've been reluctant to get them from there because they also change the models of their cheaper meters. And so if I tell you to get one this year and you next year, that one may not be available. So we're trying to work and find something that is readily available for a number of years and is economical for the students. So, um, but we'll cover that uh, in a little bit later. The correct answer for the resistance of the aluminum rod, it's a conductor. So it's going to be very, very low. It's going to be 002. Um, an example of a say the, if I were to ask you the current of a battery, I would give the kids a battery. They could measure the current output of it. It's typically around 160 milliamperes, give or take 10 milliamperes, and the voltage of a battery would be about 1.5 volts. So those would all be typical questions that the students would see at some point. So if there's any questions on the meters, uh, yes, the Sears is not readily available, even online. You can't order it, and uh, I, I looked uh, this week, and it is not uh, not available. It's, it's, it's temporarily out of stock, but uh, 
I don't know how long that temporarily is. So, um, but I'll cover more about that in a minute. The, the actual meters that I use in the meantime, John, can you go to page seven? The circuit, test, tester. circuit tester. Yes, indeed. This is another one where I may ask the students to measure the resistance uh, or, or to see if something is a conductor or an insulator or both. Um, an example of a, a conductor would be the aluminum rod, a piece of aluminum foil, that type of stuff. An example of an insulator would be, uh, say, a piece of chalk or a crayon. Uh, an example of something that would be both would be uh, the light bulb that you see in the picture has both an insulator and a, a conductor. The simplest um, circuit tester that the students can build and all these components will be readily available at the station is a single battery uh two wires the red and yellow coming off of that the red one is hooked up to a light bulb and uh, then there's a black one that's hooked up to that that you put on the object that you're measuring so when you do a measurement you would measure with the black and the yellow Put them both on the uh, item that you're measuring and if it lights up as is seen in the second picture it's a conductor. If it doesn't light up, it's an insulator. If there is a plastic or metal or glass items on that component, um, they should check all of those items. And uh, typically glass is an insulator and metal is a conductor. So the light bulb would be considered both. Another question that is used could be on the meter section or could be on the circuit tester section is uh, what I call mystery circuit cards. And uh, the mystery circuit cards are typically numbered with the numbers of the questions. So if this is question 14, the example here would have uh, button 14 on it. The front of it is what the students would see. The back is covered. It doesn't show what the circuits, but if you remove the back cover, you can see to the far right, you can see that um, circuit one would be connected to circuit C. If you see it coming down at a 45 degree angle, circuit two would be connected to circuit B. Uh, where the wires cross, um, I put tape so that they don't intersect and touch each other and uh, give a false reading. Um, if you have the time, you can make these up for your students. I make them up just with foam board and a piece of poster board to cover in the back and those are paper uh, clip uh, type items that you can get at staples and so forth and uh, and just run some wires between those but um i have a question dan sure uh, the question reads button 14 did you intend it to say button one um what I should have done in the picture and what I will clarify with that is I will change the buttons in the picture to reflect 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. Got so it. I it gets confusing if I say question 14, button one, it confuses the students. So question 14 will always be button 14. Uh, unfortunately, this picture is an older picture and it was for questions one through six. So right. I'm sorry for the confusion there, but that will be cleared up in the um, in the update in the presentation that I uh, I present to you or put on we post on the website uh, later today. So OK. Does that answer your question, John? Yes. Yeah. And in this case, I just listed an arbitrary in this one. C is not uh, 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 for button 14 isn't hooked up to C. Uh, obviously, there's no number, but we'll uh, we'll clarify that and straighten that up. Um, I'll see if there's any questions. I don't see any questions on this. So, John, if you can go to eight. Practice eight is, test meters. Yes, this is uh, more of the uh, the meters um, and this shows some examples. I did a blow up of my meter. You can see I have 82140 as the model number of the meter. Uh, I could also search on the web. Uh, it came packaged with a, uh, another electrical component and was shown under Sears model number 82146. This is all explained in the other handout. Um, they have a newer version of this uh, meter uh, that is 82141. Uh, the only difference in that is on the right hand side, if you see where it says ADC, which is amperage or current measurement for DC, 
the newer meter also has a current measurement for AC, so it has an AAC section. So it has all the components plus one additional component that this meter doesn't have. So um, if you're looking for a meter at Home Depot, Lowe's, Menards, um, uh, Amazon, uh, look for a meter that uh, has these settings on it. The settings that are important are the VDC setting, the uh, ohm setting, the VDC is in the top left hand corner of this meter. Uh, the ohm setting is, um, so we've got a little Greek symbol there, omega. Uh, that is used to measure resistance. The VDC is used to measure voltage of DC current, which is what we use and would be used on all batteries that we use. VAC would be what you would use to measure the electricity in the house. I don't expect the students to ever use that setting. However, I may ask a question about the use of VAC, as I mentioned uh, previously, if the um, electrician were to measure the voltage in your house, what setting would he use? It would be the VAC. And this is just for information so the kids would understand what that component is for. Uh, the ADC is if the kids need to measure uh, amperage or current. Um, Typically, we use the red settings there. If it's a higher current, which I don't use, they would use the gray setting on this meter. I'm just explaining that for information. That is not, um, not what we use. Um, typically, I used to ask the, kid, the, the students to measure the current of a battery or two batteries. And to do that, they would use the ADC setting and they would use uh, something around, uh, like I, I mentioned, uh, 200 um, milliamps, uh, 165 was what I told you the battery was. So they would use the 200 milliamp setting there that is like at three o'clock. Um, for VDC, if they're measuring the voltage of a battery, I could ask a question of that, and that is what I have for question 15. To measure the voltage of a battery on the table, you would use what setting? In this case, I'm asking the children to use the BAT setting. An equally correct answer that I don't have listed because I don't want them to cause confusion would be the VDC. Both of those are equally correct for measuring the voltage of the battery. For single battery, the accuracy of the meter is a little bit higher at the 1.5 volt setting. And that's why I encourage that, but uh, the 20 volt setting um, or even uh, 2000 M setting would be um, acceptable for measuring a, uh, a single battery on um, that this meter. Um, question 16, the voltage of one battery is approximately what? 1.5 volts. You can see 1.6, it might be 1.4, Four, you know, if it's been used a little bit, but you should expect something around 1.5. Um, so make sure the kids, when they use the meter, they won't always see something exactly at 1.5. It may be 1.55, it may be 1.6. The key here is the answers are always orders of magnitude different. They should not see 110 volts if they're measuring one battery. Um, we have 165 milliamperes. That would be wrong because it's the wrong units. We're looking for volts, not amperes. D is wrong and E is wrong because it uh, is looking for ohms. Again, there one is one order of magnitude greater than the other. So I don't want to, you know, nitpick and have an answer like 1.6 and 1.8 where it would easily confuse the students. My answers will always be, uh, like I said, an order of magnitude difference between them so that they, if it's not 1.5, it's 1.4. They can say 1.4 is closest to 1.5. It's much closer to that than it is to 110. So I hope that uh, avoids any confusion uh, you would have along that line. Yes, sir. Yeah, um, my question is, uh, you, you're, uh, thank you for volunteering. Uh, I'm not very familiar with electricity and you're railing off a lot of information and I, I just feel like I'm not absorbing it. Are you going to like post this video or uh, put up a lot of information uh, for uh, us non-electricity um, experts? 
Um, uh, I earlier in the uh, presentation, I I would I went to the uh, uh, Macomb uh, Science Olympiad website. There is a handout that you get if you purchase the uh, the kit. If you don't purchase the kit, you can just download the handout. That explains a little bit more in detail some of the basic principles. But um, I would also uh, encourage you just to go on um, the web in Google uh, circuits and uh, anywhere from elementary school to high school and even some college websites have some wonderful, wonderful websites out there where kids can flip switches open and close and they can see which light bulbs light up and and it explains the concepts for you uh, a little bit better. Uh, I do have some definitions uh, that might help a little bit with some of these items, but uh, a lot of this information is on the web and they could probably do that a lot better. Uh, um, learn a lot easier by uh, by searching on the web than uh, um, than going through uh, through me. Oh, OK, yeah, this, this will be and a good opportunity for you as an event coach to learn along with your students. Yeah, and I, I so understand that. that. The challenge, yeah, I know that's really exciting for you. Uh, the challenge uh, is to find just a good resource online that that does, you know, does a good job of introducing the basics. So, and we will, on your question, uh, we will post this material. This conversation we're having right now will be, uh, it, it is being recorded and will be posted on our website. Oh, okay. Thank you. Also, uh, Mike brought up a good point is that uh, ACE uh, may handle this meter. I did go on the ACE website. I didn't see it on the ACE website, but I thought last year when we were uh, prepping for the event, I thought that uh, one of the ACE hardwares that I went to, one of the larger ones, had this meter in stock. So that's, I, I can't tell you for certain um, if I Look. see it out there. Lowe's is also carrying Craftsman products these days. That might be another alternative. Exactly. I, I know Lowe's likes to carry other brands of multimeters. They keep them in a different section, but there is a chance that it might be in 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 the electrical section, or it could be in with the standard tool sections where most of the Craftsman items are are kept. So I would encourage you to look there too. That might be an option for that. Um, but if you can't find that, what you, the key thing is to look for a meter that has these options until we can find a viable option to replace our meters with the VDC, the ohms in the bat for sure, and the um, the ADC are key components. Uh, every meter I've ever seen also has a VAC um, uh, um, setting also. Uh, um, VJ asked a question. AC was not part of the test. AC is not typically part of the test. It's part of this meter, so I just may ask that question, but I don't expect the kids to do anything with AC. It's way too dangerous. There will be no hands-on stuff with it. Um, they just need to be familiar that there are two types of AC uh, of 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 um, voltage. Uh, DC voltage and AC voltage. I'm not even going to get into sine waves or anything like that on voltage AC. It's just at a very, very high level that there's two types of voltages that uh, that the students need to be aware of. So yeah, I hope that answers your question on uh, on v voltage and AC. All right, any other questions? Let's look, see if anybody's asked them. Um, OK, I don't see anything there. My, um, John, if you'd go to uh, page nine, question Practice seven. Practice test resistors. Exactly. Um, typically, we have a sheet that looks something like uh, the the drawing you see on the right hand side. Uh, this drawing is um, uh, uh, lists the um, color code for resistors. Resistors have their value based on the color. Brown equals zero or I'm sorry, black equals zero, brown equals one, red equals two, orange equals three, and so forth down there. There's also a multiplier, uh, a multiplier for that. So a 10 ohm resistor and a 100 ohm resistor would look identical on the first two bands, but the third band would be different. A higher level item, and usually I only ask one or two questions on this, is uh, the tolerance band and uh, 
for uh, something that you need high accuracy on, you would use a one or two percent tolerance resistor, which would be brown or red. Um, much more common ones, I believe the ones that you have in your kit are typically gold or silver, and those are five or 10 percent and work fine in most circuits that uh, electricians use. So um, uh, I hope that explains the uh, how the um, resistors work. In the first two, the question 17 is in the first two bands, blue stands for what number? And if you look at that, blue stands for six, because the correct answer would be C. The resistance of the resistor below is, it's a green and a blue. So a green is five and a blue is six. So we have 56 times yellow, which would be 10,000. So 10,000 times 56 is 560,000 ohms. Sometimes it's abbreviated 560K ohms. K stands for 1,000. Also on this, to make it a little bit easier for the students, if you notice, all of the questions have completely different answers and significant different orders of magnitude. So, you know, one's a single, one's 10, one's 100, one's 100,000, and one's 98 million. So typically I have some stratification there. The quiz can quickly answer this by usually looking at just the first two, but uh, should often confirm it by looking at the last one, uh, the third uh, on there that gives the multiplier just to make sure that the answer is correct. So um, this should help you with the students being able to speed through this section. So basically I'm giving you the answers to all of these questions. All they have to do is be able to look at that sheet and be able to read it and see that blue is six and this resistor, if you look at that sheet, will show five, six, and then 10,000 times 10,000. Any questions on resistors? This is a higher level thing, but this is really something that's pretty easy since the, I tried to keep it easy by providing the sheet so that the, the students, all they have to do is read. They don't have to do the memorization. Electricians will have this memorized. Will I always provide the key without asking for resistance? Um, I've often said that if 90% of the students get this correct at districts, then I may make it, but We've been a long way from reaching that 90% barrier, so I can say with a high level of confidence that I will um, always have this uh, sheet available for both district and county events um, um, for now. Um, Since we won't can, have a practice tournament this year, um, I imagine that it'll be provided. Yes, so if we're just having one tournament, this will be provided for certain. The first tournament's always provided, and and like I said, it's a pretty high threshold I have for making sure to get to the level of the kids, um, the children um, uh, score on this. Um, the only reason I'm hesitating a little bit is, you know, if I have 20 questions on this and all the kids get 20 of them right, um, it's hard to it gets harder to separate first from second, from third, from fourth place. And we do want to have clear cut winners, if at all possible, during the event and not rely on tiebreakers if we if we can. Um, I don't want to have 17 kids tie for first place and then have it settled by some type of tiebreaker. That's uh, that's not a good thing. OK, John, if you could go to section 10 there, page 10. This is uh, draw the test, draw the circuit, draw the circuit. OK, using schematic symbols only. We talked about this earlier. Schematic symbols you will see in this drawing. This is an example of what I'm looking for. I do not want to see the pictorials where a battery looks like a battery and the light bulb looks like a light bulb. Uh, we are looking for schematic symbols here, so students need to be familiar with that. Um, neatness doesn't count. Uh, I see some kids taking an awful long time drawing 90 degree angles and making sure everything looks perfect. Uh, I want to make sure they finish this. So the important thing is that they finish um, and make sure that that it is at least legible. Um, uh, sometimes uh, a line 
may not be quite connected to the light bulb, might be a millimeter away from that light bulb, the student will still get credit for that because I can see they clearly intended for it to contact that light bulb. Um, it's just that they were in a hurry with a limited time. So again, neatness doesn't count. We want to make sure they understand we're looking for understanding of concepts. Um, the question on this one would be asked two batteries in series connected in series to two bulbs in series. So this is an example of that. Go ahead, John. And when they're being asked this question, they're presented with everything on this page except for the picture that's drawn that you've drawn and you have drawn the answer as well. Yes. Absolutely correct. The, the, that's the clarification they need. That's the problem with the <laughs> sample tests and draw the circuit. I have to draw the, the answer. Yeah. So so the, the schematic shown would not be in there. Typically for draw the circuit, I ask two questions. A very simple one like this, generally a series or parallel circuit, and then usually a one that's a little bit more complicated, a series parallel circuit. It may have one or two switches in it where this one would have at most one switch in it. So so I have an easy one to build the kids, con the children's confidence up, and uh, then usually one uh, that's a little bit more difficult to kind of separate the top teams from the uh, the middle teams and so forth. So, so uh, I, you know, I look to try to stratify this again so that we don't have uh, a lot of teams with the exact same score at 100%. So any questions on draw the circuit? Let's see. Um, no, I don't see any questions there. Um, also, um, as we're talking about ans ans asking questions, uh, on the website there is a place for you to ask questions. Um, there are Dozens and dozens of questions that have already been answered. So, or, so I would encourage you to go through those. Those might be a quick way for getting an answer immediately. Uh, typically, once a question is asked, uh, I will respond within a week, usually a couple days. Um, uh, they send me when question is submitted. They send it to me via email, and uh, um, I'll reply, and uh, then they'll post it on the website. So, um, it's a good place to check for additional information if uh, if you're unsure about anything at all and uh, and get up to speed and and it could relate to anything related to this uh, the uh, this event uh, te typically technical questions on the event um, uh, uh, formatting and so forth those types of questions are usually answered in this presentation or in the rules so aren't typically addressed there. If you want to go to 11, John, this is really the last slide on the practice uh, uh, test. And then we'll have, uh, I'll go over a couple other things and then we'll ask, have time for questions and answers for everybody. So if you go to page 11. Practice um, test, draw the circuit. Ooh. I got to change the title of that. This yeah, is supposed it's the to same be, title I think, yeah. asking, but it's okay. This is supposed to be construct. My apologies there. Ah, so, I see. That's what happens when you cut and paste. Uh, using the equipment in the box, and uh, basically the equipment in the box is going to be everything that's included in that kit that we talked about earlier. Construct the circuit below. Uh, three batteries in series, connected in series to two LEDs in parallel, and one single pole, single throw switch controls both LEDs. Um, and as I mentioned, this is kind of a, a medium level one uh, question that I ask. Um, typically I'll have, as I mentioned, um, a very easy one. And the easy one usually consists of a very simple question like the series circuit we talked about earlier. And uh, we'll have two questions, one each one worth 10 points, uh, something like a series circuit or a parallel circuit. And then would have one that would be maybe a little bit more difficult that may have a diode um, hooked up in series or parallel uh, in that type of thing. Uh, the more complex ones would be um, a, a more complex uh, type of series parallel circuit. Uh, with unique locations of switches or um, uh, use of a single pole double throw switch um, is another example of where I have some circuits that uh, that would be the uh, the 40 point question. So, Dan, so there... this, for this particular question, the students are presented with all of the information that you have given them here, both the 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 word description and are you and a, do you give them a picture or not? 
or ex ex excellent question, John. Yes, I, I um, in the past. Um, I've always used the description on the left. Someone suggested drawing the, the picture also. So a couple of years ago, I, I started doing both. So they will see both. Some kids may be more comfortable looking at the item list. Some people may be more, more comfortable looking at the schematic. It doesn't make any difference to me. They're both identical. And the, all that information that you see here will be provided and they will construct it on the table. And so what once the students construct it in the test, you've got a grader who's standing right there when they're done and the the uh, one of your assistants immediately grades their performance as part of the test is that how it how it happens that's that's exactly it and uh, that's that's a very good point john that i want to cover right now um I'll add this note. I didn't add this last night when I was going through this. I saw it and there were some three things I had to add and this was one of them I missed. Um, I'm going to add this line to this is when you complete the circuit, raise your hand so I can examine it. So the students will raise their hand. Typically I look to see how they're doing as they're building it, but either myself or one of my assistants will examine it when they raise their hand and um, but they will not receive credit unless they I see it. So if it's the one where I mentioned that is a simple series circuit and a parallel circuit, if they build it and then tear it down to build the parallel circuit, I hadn't seen the first one. They will not get credit. I ask them to raise their hand so that I can make sure that we can view it and double check it and make sure it's correct and then they can tear it down. Typically, there's enough components that they don't have to tear it down. They should just build two circuits with the components at hand. There's enough there to build the series circuit and the parallel circuit or the series circuit and the circuit shown with the um, LEDs um, so they don't have to take anything apart. Typically, we like to make sure that the uh, um, event supervisor or assistant take the unit apart um, to make sure that uh, we grade it properly. So one of the things that we do do is uh, we have typically two stations for this. One where the kids are building and one where the last team built their circuit and we're grading it. So we will grade that one as the kids rotate. This is typically uh, station seven. The children will rotate to station one. If they finished it right at the end to make sure they get credit, we will grade that while they are completing on section one, and then we will give them their score when they're at station one for this circuit that is built. So we do this because that area gets um, very, very busy. Usually the kids take the full of time for it, and we don't want to slow down the next team that needs to build by not having all the uh, components available. So we have two stations set up for this, one active one that the students can build, and one that is currently being graded and then after it's graded it's taken apart and then the next team that is behind that one would go to that open station so it just makes it a little bit easier for the flow and we want to make sure all the students have a full two and a half to three minutes to build the circuit since this is the most difficult section any questions on that so that students always get feedback immediately or very very quickly as to whether they were successful on this particular question Yes, and if they build it um, and give me 10 seconds to look at it and uh, and so forth, um, I usually give them some input to it um, or even when they're up at station one because station one's a little bit easier. Um, I'll go up to them and tell them what they did wrong or if they got 100% on them on this on their circuit, I will congratulate them on getting 100% that they built it correctly. But if they did something like putting the switch in the wrong location, I will tell them they did everything correct except for the switch and they won't get credit for the switch portion of that um, um, circuit. So, so are, are you um, giving partial credit for this question? Ah. Uh, yeah, that's what it just sounded like. That's why I'm asking. Yeah. Um, um, Sorry, that's a hard question. Apparently. Yeah, that's a, that's a hard question. I'm going to do what I did last year. I'll have to look and see what I did last year. I don't think I gave partial credit on it. 
but um, I, I will explain that in on the bottom of this on the website, and I will look and see what is uh, if we give partial credit on. I don't like to give partial credit on the hard one because if I give well, uh, I'm not asking you. I'm not forcing you yeah. to make a choice. So, but it, it'd be good to be clear. Yes, it, it would be good to be clear. And then typically, just so if to let everybody know here, is that if I do offer partial credit, say this one is worth um, 10 points, um, they would get, there are three batteries, a switch, and so uh, this would be 12 points. Uh, so if you were to give if you were to give partial credit, you'd have some sort of a rubric that you would be using on the day of the tournament, so that yeah. because you're doing this really live during yes. during the test, right? This isn't offline, and so you'd have some protocol that you would be following that allocates points on a on a certain basis for certain parts of the circuit. Yeah, and I need to clarify that. And typically, what I would put on the bottom of this also is I would put um, two points for each component. So in this point is, uh, say this would be a 20 point question, I would give them, if they had one battery drawn, they would get two points. If they had three batteries drawn, they would get six points. If they would have the switch in there in the correct location, that's worth two points. Each of these LEDs is worth two points. So it's a total of 12 points. And then usually I give a bonus for everything put together properly. And there is a bonus of uh, of eight points. And um, on that so this total would be worth 20 points so i can say now with confidence that we will give partial credit on these <laughs> and this is how we're going to handle it okay so that's uh good that job. just caught me off guard there but that's how it's going to be handled okay so you guys won't have to worry partial credit with a bonus if everything is assembled correctly um okay so and then you know if they get the LED, for example, here is the batteries would have to be uh, in series in order to get the bonus for that, and these would have to be the LEDs would have to be in parallel in order to get the the full bonus for that. Okay, if they were to put uh, three batteries in uh, in parallel, they wouldn't necessarily get uh, the full credit for that. They would probably only get two points for that. Uh, if you go to page 12, any questions on that? I guess you should look. This is a very, very complex section. So, uh, Is that the definitions page? Yes, the definitions page is the next one. There are no questions. Kind of hard to probably see on the screen. It, not that important. Uh, it just gives the list of the definitions that uh, I will be asking for the students. So, so if there's a definition, it should say exactly what you see on this page. So it's just And this document is posted on the website? And this document will be posted on the website. Um, I got this from Carolina.com. Uh, some of my components I get from Carolina.com, but I found recently that Amazon has such a wide range of components. If you are looking at building your own kits or maybe want to, the two batteries that the holders aren't sufficient for you in your kit and don't want to buy a, a second kit at $30 and just want to buy some um, battery holders, um, to buy them from Amazon. The only thing I would caution is there are different types of battery holders and they are not always compatible with each other. So um, I would buy a full set. So if you're looking for five battery holders and you have two, don't buy three, probably buy five so that you have five that um, that will meet your requirements and will all fit uh, all fit together and usually they're pretty cheap they're a dollar or two so they're not uh, not going to break the bank there and it's a good source amazon's usually very quick you can usually get these items in two or three days so any questions on anything at all here okay it looks like everything's good i thank you all for attending um